It is now 30, now 930. And I just ask that if you will just bow your heads in a moment of invocation. Dear Lord, we meet to serve our community and to use our resources wisely and well, to represent all members of our community fairly, to make decisions that promote the common good. We recognize our responsibility to the past and the future and the rights and needs of both individuals and community. And as trusted servants, we seek blessings on our deliberations and on our efforts here today. May we act wisely and well. And I pray this special prayer in Jesus' name and all that agree, please say amen. Will you please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. This meeting of the Board of Commissioners is now hereby called to order. I now open the floor for a motion to accept the agenda as published. So moved. I have a motion. Second. There's a second. Any discussions or comments? All in favor? Any opposed? The purpose of this public meeting is that by law, if the governing bodies contemplate an increase in property taxes, three public hearings are to be held to allow public input into the proposed increase in taxes. This morning's meeting is designated as meeting number one. Meeting number two will be held this evening at 6.30 p.m. and meeting three will be held at 9.30 a.m. on Thursday, July the 27th when the millage rate is finalized. This now constitutes a public hearing. I would like to call our county manager, Sherry Hobson Matthews, and staff forward to give our presentation. And afterwards, each citizen will be allowed up to three minutes each for a public comment. I yield the floor to the county manager at this time. Good morning, Chair and Board Members. As Sherwood has already indicated, this is um, public hearing number one of three um, public hearings that is required um, as a result of a press release that went out in the Henry Daily Herald proposing a property tax increase. Um, this morning, myself and Mr. Johnson will go through a series of slides. Um, I would ask that if you have questions, we can either answer the questions um, towards the end or we can answer them um, through each individual slide, but I think it probably would be best if we just do it at the end, and I'll certainly defer to the board to make that final decision. Um, we do have quite a few slides to go through, but we felt it was very important to talk to you all about how we got to um, proposing a millage rate increase. Obviously, staff had to look at the FY18 budget, which was adopted, but we also had to look at some of our capital needs, which we'll get into once we begin the presentation. So just to recap, we did adopt a FY18 budget this year. And in that budget, we projected that our property taxes would be 82,777,958. That's about 53% of our total budget. When we adopted our FY17 budget, it was adopted 142,560. We had about $2.5 million worth of amendments and the final budget was 145,112. Now when we talk about having about $2.5 million worth of amendments, we brought approximately 30 amendments to the board after the budget was adopted. And a number of those amendments that were brought to the board were for capital needs. So that's very important for me to note to you all that when we adopted the budget in FY17, the 145, it did not include any of our deferred capital needs that we've deferred for a number of years. So when we went into our FY18 budget, the operational needs that we knew that we were going to have to have was $9.2 million, and it resulted in the board adopting a budget of 154357 Again, that budget did not include any of our deferred capital needs. I think I did mention this during the initial budget process, that the original request that came in from all of the de departments included $201 million worth of needs and then $32.5 million worth of capital needs. If you all will recall, Brad um, earlier this week um, presented to you all some information regarding our capital projects, and we'll again get into that um, later in the presentation. So let's talk about our excess fund balance. The remaining FY16 balance was $11,195,000. In order for us to have a balanced budget for our FY18 budget, we had to take $6.6 .6 million from the $11 million. That left us with a balance of $4.5 million. 
As you all will recall, the board did adopt a resolution which capped our fund balance at 25%. And so of the budget, that additional $2.9 million is taken from the $11 million, which leaves us with an FY16 fund balance of $1.6 million. So let's talk about what those additional items were in the budget that we had to fund or that the board elected to fund and then some items were a result of SPLOS projects that were completed in which we had to provide some staffing. We had the health insurance that the board um, elected to not pass on to the employees but to take on the additional increase at a cost of $4.3 million. We opened a new senior rec center in Hampton and that cost was $282,000 and that again is for operation and maintenance. We had salaries for fire station number 15 and 16, which we just recently opened, fire station number 15. Fire station number 16 is actually under construction, and we are looking to have fire station 14 open at the end of the month, but the funds have already been budgeted for that station. We also provide an additional allocation to the library. In addition to the $1.8 million um, that was part of the budget, we also provided an additional $500,000 to the library. We also funded some new positions at $482,000. We elected to give the employees an across the raise board at 2%, which resulted in $776,000. And then in keeping with the initial reset program that was set up, the board elected to continue with that and give a 1% and a 1% um, for, for the years of service and the longevity um, for those employees which in, in our public safety. So that resulted in $961,000. And then again, for any and all certifications within our public safety group, an additional $500,000. So at the beginning of the budget, we knew that we were going to have to take on some mandatory additional costs. The $9.5 million is the result of that. So let's talk about the millage. Well, commissioners, good morning. First, let's talk about how we got here, uh, like Ms. Matthews did, and recap on the capital needs that were not included in the FY18 budget. I'll reference the sheets we passed out at the last commissioner's meeting uh, two nights ago. And I'll go through each one and kind of show the capital needs we're looking at. They were broken down from that 30 million, 30 plus million submitted down to a 15 million priority. This was done by our fleet director and our facilities director. Uh, as we mentioned last uh, two nights ago, that our aging facilities and aging fleet um, uh, do have some, some uh, downfalls with uh, roof repair, roof replacement, uh, equipment uh, as old as 22, 23 years uh, old out there running on our streets every day in our public safety uh, departments. So if you'll see here we have community services uh, replacing the passenger vans. Uh, the commission and support vehicles for the commissioners, county managers office, the Henry County DOT, two Ford F-150 trucks, facilities, the F-350 crew cab, F-250 crew cab, the Toro tractor. For fire EMS, two fire engines, five ambulances, seven support vehicles. Um, also, replace two of the brush trucks. One is out of service today, um, non-repairable. Uh, sort of just about two trucks to remount the equipment uh, from the brush trucks to new uh, F-350s. Uh, we're looking at leasing capital funds, at least two ladder trucks. Um, and our capital program instead of purchasing outright is leased them and 20 self-contained breathing apparatus to replace old outdated equipment. In police services, 19 Dodge Chargers, a Tahoe, four expeditions for criminal investigations or crime scene units, and five of the trailers as requested to get out the community policing process to, to learn what our patterns are and our speed patterns and help control more community policing aspect. Recreation, passenger vans, and three F-250 crew cabs for our, our maintenance crews for parks. Uh, one police and power for the sentence enforcement, 10 interceptors for the sheriff, senior services, one escape, and one F-150. Tax assessors for four escape. And moving forward for our facilities, our priority one facilities is the airport hangars. Uh, to fixing the, the hangers out there, some capital projects over there. We mentioned last meeting two nights ago the cooler for the uh, our facility in the cooler, a small facility and a place for our coroner to, to do his job. 
uh, courts for place of presentation equipment, facilities, the office warehouse storage building um, is taking that building we already own, it's on the ground at DOT, that's been there for many years and having it erected on, on site to have our facilities uh, and also half of it will be our records. We have nowhere right now, we're over capacity for record storage and, and, and to have somewhere for the records to go. Uh, for roof repair, administration building, facilities building, the work camp road. The development building, fire stations one, three, and five, probate court, Hidden Valley Rec, Heritage Rec, Fairview Rec, connecting Henry, 40 Atlanta Street, the public safety AC units at the public safety complex as a phased in repair process, repairs to the courthouse, repairs to maintenance and judicial center. The fleet services, we had to repair our diesel tank for our holding facility at our, our fueling station. I also put a generator at station six in Fairview. Right now, the, the Fairview fueling station, which is our only our second fueling station in the county for the north end, has no backup generator. If we lose power, we lose services there. A multiplex scan tool and also install some security for our uh, fleet services. Technology is very important also, and we must stay up to date with our technology as we move forward. The technology department, we have fiber switches at the admin building, the sheriff's office that need to be replaced, the Nexus switch, replaced 4,500 switches, and that's a type of switch, not 4,500 of them. The installed new network switches throughout the county, upgrade phone system, replace email failover, and the Phillips Drive fiber relocation for that building that's, that's at Phillips Drive, the old admin building, to replace that fiber, move it, relocate it, and actually tear that building down. Recreation, exercise equipment, fencing, various parks, a stage at Nash Farms, workout equipment, school boards, replace school boards as needed, resurface tennis courts, Hidden Valley, Richard Craig, and McDonough, playground equipment for Nash Farms, and the old jail annex roof. So moving forward, we feel that some of the savings over, over the, the um, FY18 budget, or it was not included, but FY17 uh, rollover will be some funds rolled over to help fund some of this, but we do have a deficit, deficit in the funding. And that deficit is the unfunded 4.3 million um, or a little more, depending on what our, what our fund balance ends up at the end of the year is the roof repairs at fire station seven. There we go. Roof repairs at fire stations seven, 11, 12, and 13. The public safety annex, floor replacement for the recreation centers in Fairview, the dog park enhancements, playground equipment, Hampton Lucas Grove rec centers, replace the old section of the jail, fiber line installation from the Spalding County to the administration building. Upgraded visual aids throughout the county, uh, internet failover, disaster recovery, wireless access points, replacements, and expanded Dell SAN, and that's all IT. And the fleet, the John Deere EVAC for DOT, animal control, code enforcement, fleet pickup trucks, and the heavy lift truck for the fleet <coughs> tire service, the police department, additional chargers in Tahoe, and recreation department, F-150, and a Ford Escape. Now let me go a little further on the fleet. We're in the process of right-sizing our fleet. We've never had a fleet program where we right-size our fleet. Right-size means the right number of people to the right number of, of apparatus. And we're finding now that we have, um, I say more apparat, more equipment, but equipment that has not been accounted for. Our fleet director is actually putting the program together, finding all of our equipment, definitely have surplus. We'll be selling the older, older vehicles that are not being used or, or to have are beyond repair that are sitting in our, our fleet services yard. Uh, and if you have 100 drivers, you don't need 200 vehicles. So we're right-sizing a fleet. 
once we have that done, we'll come to the board and, and each will and, and get approval from the board to say each department has this number of, of, of fleet vehicles. And once new vehicles come in, the old vehicles go away. So we don't keep piling up uh, vehicles in our fleet. And that's something that's never been done and just getting the better accountability and make sure we're doing the right thing for our money. So our millage options to consider. We have two considerations or anywhere, anywhere in between is our 7 point or 12.733, our current millage rate at this point. Ms. Matthews mentioned earlier um, about 9.7 million out of last year's fund balance had to be used to balance this year's budget. One of the things that the commission has charged us with is doing away or getting away from using fund balance to balance the budget every year because it will run out eventually. So at this short, um, the shortfall this year is 123,000. Um, FY18 budget going into it again 9.7 uh, that's including the 25 percent increase that we have to have for our fund balance to maintain the 25 percent this option would result in a budget using 6.7 from the remaining fund balance and that is if revenues remain the same that's no revenue change or new revenue generation for next year staff also propose, proposes this 2017 millage rate at 13.73 as your second option this option would generate $87,836,608 in tax collections and will result in reducing the fund balance usage next year to $199,000 in next year's budget, assuming there's no increase in, in the tax digest or values. And I think it's also important for the board to note that at the time that the budget was adopted, we had our tax digest numbers um, based on March um, assumptions. As a result of the budget being adopted and then presently, um, as of July 13th, those numbers have actually gone down. And there's two reasons for that. Though, obviously, it's gonna be those exemptions that are out there, um, or actually it's just one reason, the exemptions that are out there um, that could result in those revenues going down. Um, obviously, because we do not adopt our millage rate in our budget simultaneously, um, we do have to look at the projections that we have at the time um, so that we can at least put, make a conser conservative effort to at least provide an uh, assessment for you all. So I just wanted to make sure that the board was aware of that as well. So let's talk about our 2017 millage proposed above the 100% tax rollback. And this slide is very important because I think a number of you all um, have seen um, via media um, and via obviously the television and news reports that Henry County is proposing a 13.51% increase. And so we felt like it was important to talk you all through how we got to a 13.51 increase. What you have is a home value that is worth $150,000 and then you take your 40%, so your taxable value was actually $60,000. If the individual claims homestead exemption, that takes $15,000 from it, and then you're actually taxed on $45,000. So looking at the millage rate moving from the 12.098, which is a 100% rollback, from the 13733 that we're proposing, it would be an increase of about 1.635, which would equate to the 13.51%. And I wanna make sure I go through that again, because when you talk about an increase, you don't look at the previous year, you look at the 100% rollback number. So that is why you will see a substantial increase, because 100% rollback would have been the 12.098. So I just wanted to go through that. Now, what's interesting about this is we compare it two home values. One compared at $150,000, and then one compared at $225,000. If you look at the proposed 13.733, the additional tax on a $150,000 home would be $73.57. For a home valued at 225, or in obviously the taxable value of 90,000 with no homestead, the increase would be 147 point, or $147.15. Again, this is just to show the same information that I just went over, but it does again show that the 13.51% is actually factual in terms of what that percentage of increase is. And again, I think it's also important to note that in the bottom section where it says breakdown of percentage increase, again, the 100% rollback millage would have been 12.098. The 2016 millage adopted by the board is 12.733. 
Um, had staff recommended to the board for the millage to remain at the 12.733, the increase would have been 5.25. But as you all have just heard from Brad, there are a number of capital needs that we have just deferred for many, many, many years. And so staff's recommendation to the board was to increase the mill by one mill or increase the millage rate by one mill, um, which would increase the percentage of the increase by 8.27, and the sum of both would be 13.51. Okay, so let's talk about an impact on a property owner who has a home that's valued at $150,000 and $250,000. And I'm using these numbers because these are the numbers that were actually advertised as part of our legal advertisement. And again, this is the county portion only. So if we were to maintain the 12.733 mills with homestead exemption, again, the 40% assessed value for the 150 would be $60,000, and then for the 250, 100000 we take the homestead exemption out of about 15,000, takes your taxable value to 45,000 and 85,000 concurrently. County tax rate at 12.733. The county tax that that homeowner would pay would be 572.99 for a home for $150,000. And then for the county tax for 250, it would be 1,082.31. Now I'll ask you to just kind of pin that page because I'm gonna go to the next slide and show the difference between the 12.733 and the recommended 13.733. Again, this is the county portion only. If you'll, and I won't go through the 40% because I think we're all clear on that, but if you look at the increase for the county tax rate now of 13.733, the county tax will be 617.99, and for a $250,000 home, the county tax would be 1,167.31. The increase over that 12.733 would be $45 for the $150,000 home and $85 for the $250,000 home. Okay, so then we move into the total millage rate breakdown because I've spent a lot of time talking about the county portion only, but I think it's also important to talk about the entire millage rate. Um, we get a lot of calls in terms of why is my millage rate so high? Why am I paying so much? And I think it's important for everyone to understand that the total millage is 38.361. Of the 38.361, the county's millage is only 33.2% of that entire total. The school board has maintenance and operation and they're collecting a meal of 20 meals, which is the maximum allowed. And that represents about 52.1%. And then they also have a school bond at 3.628, which represents 9.5%. So of the 100% total millage rate, 61% of that is through the school board. We also have the water authority, which collects a two mil that represents about 5.2%. Okay, again, this would now present to you all what the millage rate would look like if we were to add the one mil. The county, again, would be 13.733, representing 34.9%. Previously, under the 12.733, it was 33.2. The school board would be 50.8 and 9.2. Under the previous, it was 52.1, 9.5. Water, again, would be two mils, which would be 5.1%, again, taking the millage to 39.361. So let's talk about services used in the one in a two point or twelve point seven three three millage. If you look at the number one, be public safety, at fifty three point eight percent of your of your millage goes to public safety. Thirteen point one for legislative and executive, eleven point four judicial, eight percent public works, four point three health and welfare, culture and recreation is four point three, debt and development authority is two point nine and housing and development to give you 100% of where your, where your millage is today at the 7.3. Now if we move to the 13.73, you'll see a small change, it's 53.8 public safety, 13.1 legislative and executive, 11.4 judicial, 8% for public works, 4.3 health and welfare, 4.3 for culture and recreation, debt services and development authorities 2.9 housing and development at 2.1 giving you your 100 percent now it's important to look at the uh, executive and legislative executive that is our second highest number we want to make sure everybody understands what incorporates the executive level 
of our, our and, and legislative level of our government. You'll see our technology services um, is 17.8 percent of that of that total. 16.3 facilities maintenance tax assessors 14.8 tax commissioner 13.8 risk management 8.2 elections 5.2. Finance 5.0, County Manager's Office 4.4, Board of Commissioners 4.0, Human Resources 3.6, Procurement 2.2, Public Relations 2.0, County Attorney 1.8, and the County Clerk 0.9. That number will give you your legislative 13% of, of the budget of your millage. So just that's a high number. Just want to make sure everybody understood. That was that's a lot of, lot of moving parts in the legislative and executive branch. And I think also looking at that final column, the share of the millage, while the, ex the legislative and executive level is the second highest, it only represents about 1.798 of that total millage cost. So then we have the allocation of tax dollars, again, on a $150,000 home with 40% assessed value, taking it to 60,000, looking at a 12.733 county millage with obviously your standard exemptions. County portion is 572.99, which is 28.6%. School would be about 70 or 66%. Um, with 1120 for M&O, 217 for the school bond, and then $90 on the water, which represents about 4.5% for a total tax dollar of 2,057. Now, comparing that to the recommended one mil increase, and we put both on the same slot so that you all could compare both, with the 13.733, your county um, tax dollars would be 617.99 um, versus the 572.99. Your school M&O would remain at the 1,120. Um, the school bond would be 217.68, and then the water would be $90. So the increase to the 12.733, again, would be $45. Now let's look at cost per day, cost per year, by the vision of the government. If you look at your chart, the yearly cost for your legislative and executive is 76.65 dollars per per year your unallocated costs 30.37 judicial 66.66 public safety 314 dollars and 28 cents public works 48 dollars 14 cents health and welfare 25.80 culture recreations 26 dollars and six cents housing development 12 dollars and 33 cents and other uses 17 dollars and 70 cents that's on a hundred fifty thousand dollar home the important look at your cost per day, and we'll look at the public safety uh, aspects. Is 0.86 or 86 cents a day for that 50 percent of your of the budget there, that new millage. At 13.73 on our next slide for just public safety, how it's broken down is the yearly cost for police services 84.05, fire EMS is $112.50, EMAs $1.36. Public Safety Communications, $1.68. Sheriff Administration, $48.22 or $8.22. Jail Operations, $56.38. And other public safety is $10.09, which equals to $314.28 or the 50.84%. So now we have another slide again that talks about a home that's $250,000 home with, a, again, assessed value of 40%, which would be the $100,000. Two comparisons, the 12.733 county millage rate with standard exemptions versus the 13.733 county millage rate with standard exemptions. Again, you have your county costs, your school, and your water, and the increase from the 12.733 would be $85. Again, this is on a home that's at a cost of $250,000 with an assessed value of $100,000. I just say home at 225,000 for public safety, and I won't go through all the numbers again uh, for you. But the entire cost is $1,029 for all branches uh, of funding the government services um, of that 154,377,270 um, with public safety being the highest at $523.80 on a $225,000 home. 
And your public safety also shows the increase of that, the $523 we just mentioned of the police, fire, EMA, communications, sheriff, administration, and jail operations, and other equal to $523, which is a 50.84%. So what does all of this mean? Brad's talked in depth about the capital projects. Um, we've heard not only from the commissioners, but from citizens and constituents on what their desires are in terms of how they want Henry County um, to look in terms of the services that are provided. We've talked about our need to increase um, our cleanup in districts. We've talked about our public safety. We've talked about supporting our libraries. We've even talked about outside agencies that we'd like to provide some additional funding to, but we just can't because we have our own internal needs. When you talk about a county that has almost 220,000 individuals and you look at this final slide and it, it, it speaks volumes in terms of what we as residents um, pay based on our home value. Um, granted, our staff members are going well beyond this $2 and $3 that's listed on the individual slides. Um, our staff has learned to continue to just work, work, work. And what we've tried to do is look at every year, how can we fiscally be responsible for the budgets that we have? Staff has recognized that for a number of years, we don't have capital projects. We're, we're not able to do the things that we need to do, but we've been able to continue to work effectively with what we have. But we as a staff have determined that we have some needs. And the list that Brad presented originally started at $32 million. And we went back to staff, we went back to the end users, and we went back to the experts and said, look, what are your priorities? If I were to walk out the building now, what do I need to be concerned about? Is that roof going to fall in? Is the car going to cut off? So we've done our best to look at what our needs are. Is this the fix? It's the beginning. One thing that we are proud about is that when we prepared the capital project list, we went ahead and identified our priority two and priority three projects. We've also looked at the vehicle replacement plan. So we recognize that we've got to have some plans in order so that next year, in the next two or three years, we're not having to come back to the board to say, we need to increase the millage so that we can take care of some of the things that we need to take care of. Obviously, if the millage is not increased, we'll continue to function, but there will be amendments that will come back to the board. There will be emergencies that will come up, and we will have to determine what our priorities are. I think I've heard from each and every one of the commissioners in terms of what you envision, not only for your district, but for the county as a whole. And I think staff has done an excellent job preparing a list of what we feel like are what we, our needs, not our wants. Because I can tell you our staff could give us a $50 million needs of wants, and they can give us that because they want what's best for the county. So again, if you all have any questions for myself, staff, we have members of our finance department here, our budget department, and our tax commissioner's office, we'll be more than happy to answer any questions, and we await the public comments. Thank you. All right, thank you, Ms. Matthews and Mr. Johnson. And we'll now see if there are any questions or comments from the board before we begin our public comment section. Okay, I'm Commissioner Holmes, yes. Where can I find this presentation online? We will have it uploaded um, immediately following the meeting. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, Commissioner French. Sherry, thank you very much for bringing this to us. And, uh, you know, I, I think we've been over the budget multiple times, so I don't think we need to rehash the budget. Um, I just did want to perfect the record real quick. There was a newspaper article that came out that said the Board of Commissioners, Court, Board of Commissioners seek to raise the millage um, that's not actually accurate. The staff has proposed a millage rate increase, not the Board of Commissioners. We are in the hearing to hear about what we may want to do, but I just want to make everybody aware. And um, this year I was on the budget committee, and I'm very familiar with the budget. And um, we end up cutting the budget quite a bit, uh, so we wouldn't have to increase the millage. And so I just want my constituents of the 4th District to know I have no intent on voting to raise the millage. My intent is to leave the millage where it is at. And I, I just want to be up front with everybody um, so we're not mixing words. But uh, again, thank you for everything. And I, I, you know, I'd love to be able to raise the millage and, and be able to get the capital projects that we need to get done. But at this time, I just can't see burdening the taxpayers any more than we already are. So I just wanted to get that out. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, one question I have is, do we have anyone from the tax commissioner's office to talk about the history of our property values? Because the county has gone through a lot of growth, but at the same time, we reached some economic 
impacts that have impacted us. And fortunately, we've got some news about the increase of value of our property. So I think that that is important for the citizens to also hear if we have someone from the tax commissioner's office or someone that can respond to that. What I will do, we do have a representative from the tax commissioner's office, um, Lynn Carty, and this is her first year um, going through the millage rate hearings. Our tax commissioner actually had a meeting at the Department of Revenue and will be here this evening um, to address any issues that may come up. If you don't mind, Chair, if we could defer that until the 6.30 meeting, then I'll make sure that we get a response to that and then we can certainly post. What we will do this time is post any questions and answers that come up on the website, um, unless Lynn is prepared to answer that. Um, I just wanted to say that um, as far as the values go, that would be the tax assessors. They determine value. We just bill and collect for the, for the county. Okay. okay. Well, that's a good clarification, but I do want to make a note that um, based on the homework that I've done personally, um, back in um, 2007, the value of one meal was about $6.4 million. And we've gone through some economic downturns um, from 2007 to about, you know, from actually from 2007, we began an uptake in 2013. And it is interesting that now we're just now here in Henry County in 2017, just now getting back to the value that we had in 2007. So I know we hope to have uh, either the tax assessor slash the tax commissioner to talk about those this evening. But I think that that's important to note as well. Um, again, we've experienced some downturns here across this, this nation, but also here in Henry County. And at the same time, we still had growth. So again, just wanted to make that note as we continue to hear from our citizens as well. Any other questions or comments from the board? Commissioner Clemens. I also sat on the budget committee this year, and I know that there are a lot of um, capital projects and a lot of needs that we have for the county. Um, when I um, heard about the proposal to us to increase the rates, I could only think about the seniors, um, those people who are just bouncing back from the recession and thinking about the hit that they will take from an increase. Um, I think that staff has presented us with one solution, um, and I would like to formally request more solutions so that we are transparent with our community, that if we don't raise uh, the taxes, which we, I don't plan to vote to raise the taxes, but there are other alternatives that we can use as a county to get the funds that we need. And I think that if we could start letting our community know that there are alternatives, um, and so we don't have to just say what happens to the county if we don't raise the taxes, we need to use those other alternatives to get the funds that we need to make sure that we take care of this county. Thank you. Other Thank questions you. or comments from the board? Um, one final comment for me before we open it up to public comment. Um, I too was on the budget committee and um, the staff was very challenged to go back and not just um, identify items that they need and want, but we actually said, what are the most critical? So that has been one pushback that we've given, and as you can obviously see through the previous budget process, that they did go back and they made cuts. The second thing is, is that the staff is continually being challenged to go back and look for operational efficiencies. Are we um, actually having redundancy in some areas? Um, as we've got a new organizational chart, are there gonna be opportunities to make sure that we're efficient and even with the people resources that we have? And then at the same time, we do know that there are still needs that are out there um, that exist in every department. I know as I was speaking this weekend to uh, individuals in our police department, there are still needs uh, in the vehicles, not that we just get the vehicles, but are they fully equipped? Do they have the radars? Do they have all of the things that are needed? Do they have the backup weapons that we have so that they can, of course, continue as they need to do to keep our community safe? And then, of course, as you think about our uh, DOT workers and other departments, we are again looking for the technology that is going to help us. Even today, sometimes we go through technology issues that slows down the process. And then I'm glad to hear that we've got an ERP system that is coming forward to help us get up to speed. But I think the key that we all need to think about is Henry County has changed. And we are changing. And we are growing. And we are growing at a fast rate. And as we all, I'm not in favor of tax increases, but I also believe that if you invest in what you need, you're going to get what you want. And I just also make a note that we've got to be very sensitive to all of our citizens. But at the same time, we've got to make sure that Henry County and has the service 
services that we need. And that's why we'll continue to hear from our citizens and we're looking forward to your public comments. We need to continue to listen to our employees. We need to continue to respect what the staff is doing to make sure that they're doing all that they can to make sure that we're not just requesting just to have money to unprudently use taxpayers' money. So again, we're looking forward to hearing from, the, um, from our community and we'll again listen for more information as we go. Other comments from the board? Okay. Okay. Well, at this time now, um, I would like to now invite any citizen wishing to speak on this matter to come forward. I will remind you that you have three minutes to speak, and if you would please state your name and address for the record. So we'll um, just ask you to come, um, and again, we'll respect you for three minutes. Again, welcome everyone, and appreciate you being here. Thank, Thank you. you, sir. My name is Richard Solomon, uh, 254 Oakwood Circle. I'm a veteran. I just moved here. Um, from what I saw, I was uh, lost trying to get here, but what I saw, it's a beautiful place to live. My, my dog and my cat, they walk around with me. Um, I would like, first of all, since I got here late, I, what I did catch was every time we have a meeting and we meet here like this, we should have those assessments on deck starting from the history, like you said, or whoever asked that, that was a good one. And um, from the history, and every time we meet, we should have that assessment here, y'all agree? And, and uh, as far as the police officers and the taxes needed for to equip these cars, that's, that's good. Because if I was a police officer, I would want to be well equipped to handle what's going on out here. And as I walk around with my dog, I feel like I'm a citizen. And I don't just protect me and, and my household. I protect my neighborhood. My, me and my neighbor, you know, we, I just start with that. But I would just hope that when you see me out, you say, okay, that's one that's just looking out for all of us and would do the same. That would ease up on anybody even thinking they could come in to uh, our, our area and, and, and just turn it into like where I came from, Detroit, Michigan, or Fulton, what's going on in Cobb County, or Compton from where I came from. We would, we would be an assistance to the police. And they wouldn't need all that tax for whatever, but if they need it, yeah, give it. But it, it's a community thing. They come in to help protect us, and we have to do our part. I'm a disabled veteran, but I'm not going to take no, you know, I, I'm going to fight for what's mine. And so I love to be able to walk in, and go to the park and walk down the street with my dog and know that I'm safe. Because I, when I moved here, I didn't know nothing about this area. But they kept saying, they don't play that out there. The police don't play that out there in Henry County. I was like, that's what I need uh, in my life right now. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Would you please state your name and address? I'm Larry please. Murray with Ethics and Government. Uh, here is a from 07, 8, a tax digest to 2016. Shows about a 15 million increase in revenue, but then that has to be split among all the water departments and school departments and then the county. First of all, I want to say to Sherry and, and Brad, thank you for once looking long term instead of short term. Let me say to the commissioners, five years ago, the place around uh, Luella School was full of trailers. We went, quit building houses, the trailers went away. We finally got schools caught up. Well, today it's being surrounded by trailers again. That's your fault. That's the city of McDonough's fault. When you build all these apartments and all these houses and hadn't got long-term planning, there goes your tax digest. The county school system is maxed out right now. Plus, they got the splash. That's now been spent. If we don't quit, if we don't start planning, it'll continue to eat in and erode our tax base. Our county, and I've been a commissioner in 88. Four years, we didn't have no tax increases. You've got to do a better job of planning and managing your money. Last week, I saw an event happen out at one of the departments. Eight vehicles answered that call, eight. We needed at a max two, three with an ambulance. That's, we got to do a better job of managing what we're doing. You got to do a better job of long-range long planning. Let me say this. 
This is taxpayers right here. I don't mind paying a little bit more. If I get some quality of life accomplishment with it rather than all warehouses and trucks. If you do a better job of planning. When a water department gets $15 million a year from the county tax budget and a man makes $340,000 a year, that ain't planning. That's highway robbery. Plus, making tax credits and profits off the land for, uh, for water aquifers, we, we need to investigate that at the water department and cut those profit sharing motives they have among the brothers as well as the education department. When you can sell land to your brothers and sisters and make a fortune while the taxpayers get nothing. If we're, going, if we're going to raise taxes, and I don't mind paying a little bit more, then you better do a better job of planning. And you better do a better job of, of in figuring out where our money is going. Take that $2 million Thank you, back Mr. Morey. Thank from the you. water department. Here's your budget if you want it. I'm Bud Younger and from D. Clemens District. Uh, real short comment, I can make people mad in a lot less than three minutes. Um, the two things that I've observed that I don't like that's going on in the county is too much money being spent on old people like me. If you get old like I am and you can't support yourself to some degree, shame on you. I see these senior centers and I go in there and they're not that many people there and the ones that are there most of them don't need it and the other thing I see are these buses running around parked in front of McDonald's with nobody in on them except the driver I think there's a lot of money wasted there um, those are the two basic things I wish I knew in detail more about some of the other ca other categories of the budget but we're wasting money in a lot of areas not all not by a long shot and I know that uh, but uh, we are in some and this I'm 78 years old if I'm not senior nobody is and I know that we don't need a lot of that stuff that old folks like we can get it at church we can get it by volunteering at the hospital there's a lot of things we can do for ourselves and we don't need to be coddled thank you all thank you good morning if you'll set your name and address Hi, my name is Phyllis Haddon, and I live at 955 Crumbly Road, um, north of McDonough, uh, but it is a McDonough address. Um, I wanted to thank you for the opportunity for this meeting this morning and to learn more. We heard what we heard from the news report, and it said that property taxes in Henry County were going up 13 point something percent in some areas, 22 percent in some other areas. I don't know how accurate that is. It doesn't sound like from the presentation today that that is accurate. But the main thing that I wanted to say is I appreciate coming to a board meeting, hearing good information that I hope I can follow up and see on in a little better online, and also hearing comments from the commissioners that it's not a done deal. I've been to quite a few meetings in my lifetime, and you go to meetings and it's just almost like there's already a rubber stamp there, that it's just a formality, and they're not really listening and hearing from the citizens. And I really do appreciate about that about this board, and I appreciate the comments that I heard this morning. The other thing I wanted to say is that our property taxes over the last five years have gone up and up and up. Uh, some, I think, are more like 40% over this last period of time. And our assessments this year were even higher. So the actual tax assessments are higher, and then you add that to the millage rate. And it really does put more than a 45 and an $85 burden on the citizens. So thank you again for this meeting, and thank you for your kind comments. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Lila Brady, and I live at 355 Cattleman Circle in McDonough. The question that I have, and like the last resident, I agree that this is the first meeting I have attended, and I agree that there was some very useful information in, that, in those slides and hope to see more detail online. But one of the questions that I have that I didn't hear an answer to is about deficit of the budget. And funding these projects and paying more in the millage rate 
will we balance the budget and will those things get done along with having if there's any hiccups or unforeseen issues um, so that was one of the things that I did not hear whether or not the budget will actually be balanced and is it balanced because based on the presentation um, funds are being used that are set aside for emergencies and those funds are currently being tapped into so before as a resident and as a taxpayer that I would be willing and want the commission to approve a tax increase, I would want the budget to balance and to be balanced going forward and not to continue to be in the hole or have to use additional funds. Thank you. And we'll ask the county manager to respond to you later. Thank you. Good morning for your state your name and address, morning. please. My name is Deborah Scott, and I live at 421 uh, Gloucester Road in uh, Locust Grove. And uh, I am new to the county and very concerned about what uh, role businesses play uh, in this county as far as carrying the burden of uh, taxes. Uh, as you know, on 155, all these warehouses have been built. Many of them are empty. Are the businesses taxed as much as homeowners are, or do they get all the tax breaks? And since a large percentage of the budget is for schools, in Henry County's schools are not that good, I'm just wondering what's going on uh, with that. So, could we uh, consider taxing businesses more and homeowners less? Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, Jermaine Chambers, 4528 Cloister Circle uh, in Hampton. Uh, I wanted to uh, echo a couple of things. Uh, uh, from the gentleman and also the lady that just presented herself here as well. Also, I'm a retired 26-year uh, Army veteran. Uh, but uh, one of the things I think we want to take a look at uh, uh, concerning uh, the second and third order effects of a growing county. Uh, when I was stationed here uh, in 2000, uh, from 2006 to 2010, um, the schools in Henry County, particularly Dutchtown High School, in that school uh, area was rated at about a seven uh, or eight, I think it was during that time. And now uh, the school is rated at a five uh, and declining. Uh, so if the schools are receiving uh, the bulk of the monies for the uh, property taxes, where uh, is that money going if the education level in those schools are dropping? And so uh, I think we need to take a, a look at the second and third order effects of a growing county uh, because if we don't evaluate it and manage uh, the finances better to get better uh, education for uh, our most prized um, possession, which are our children, uh, then those second and third order effects to crowded schools will be teachers being overwhelmed, subpar education and when you have overwhelmed schools subpar education we know what that leads to uh, and so without going to all of that uh, I, I think that we need to really evaluate uh, uh, how we manage that money in our schools and our our prize possession our children and their education level and get that stuff fixed thank you thank you sir good morning, good morning. My name is Tamika Coleman. Um, I live at 111 Meadow Ridge Court in Stockbridge. Um, and just kind of to piggyback on what some of the other citizens have already talked about with schools, um, my children go to the schools in Stockbridge, um, Stockbridge High, Stockbridge Middle. And the quality of education that they're receiving in those schools is terrible. Um, but that's the area we live in. So because we live in Stockbridge, I feel like my kids are suffering educationally because they're, the funds are not there. They're not getting, in Stockbridge, I feel what they're getting in Locust Grove. Um, I'm not sure where the funds are going for education because the money obviously is there, but we need to do something about education, especially in the Stockbridge areas. Um, I know Locust Grove, McDonough areas are doing well, 
but the, the schools look really nice. They're built very nice, but the schools in Stockbridge are not. Um, so should we suffer? We pay, same, we pay taxes as well. So I don't understand where, where the money is going. Um, we just need to do better. I saw also that the legislative and executive branch is getting 11 or 13 percent, and the percentage for the, those type things are as well as the percentage for culture and recreation is only 4 percent. Um, the other, I can't remember what the other one was, but it was only 4 percent, and I don't understand why we're not putting more into culture and recreation. That, just as the gentleman just stated, our kids are important, and we need to do better with our kids, and that's my comment. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair and Council. Good I mean, morning. Commission, I'm sorry. Um, Carlos Greer, 358 Grove Road, Lux Grove, Georgia. I'm here on behalf of, uh, uh, in regards to the uh, proposed tax increase that we're, that's been talked about in the news. And one of my questions <clears throat> would be is, as a resident of Locust Grove, why is it that there is such an increase for those who live in Locust Grove as opposed to the rest of the county? Um, also, you know, with the entire county as a whole, why is it such a drastic increase in the um, percentages and you know, what uh, is there something else that can be looked at as far as raising these funds and helping out our community so that people wouldn't have to struggle? Because again, I'm a working citizen, and though that type of money um, each year added on to our taxes, it would uh, detrimentally affect some people, especially those that are on the fixed income. So I would ask that you would take that into consideration when making your decisions. Thank you. Thank you. Any others wishing to speak? Another call, any other citizen wishing to speak? Okay, well thank you. Well this finalizes our public hearing this morning and um, at this time I'll invite back our um, county management team to respond to some of the questions that are Come and then, of course, the board will be given another opportunity to speak as well. I believe I've captured a number of the questions that have been raised. If I've missed anything, please do um, let me know. Um, in a rush to get through the presentation so that we could get to public comments, we had quite a bit of information, and I did realize that actually in the package that you all received, there is a 2007 through 2017 history of tax digest collections and millage. So I do want to place that on the overhead as well because it was a part of the presentation and I just missed that. So if you will look on the overhead or obviously in front of you, um, you do see where the tax digest beginning in 2007, um, what the numbers were. And then going down to 2016, um, where we capped at the 6.1. Um, if you look below that, we are showing what the digest numbers would be based on the 12.733 and the 13.733. Now what's important to note about this is in 2007, our collections were about $67 million. We did increase in 2008 and 2009, but then we dropped in 2010, and then we continued to drop in 2011. We went up in 2012. Um, we went up a little bit in 2013, and then we, we are steadily increasing. Now, what's interesting about this is if you go over to the fifth column, pay particular attention to what the millage rate was at the time. So in 2007, your millage rate was at 11.2. Our collections were at 67 million. We dropped the millage rate to 10.969. Our collections were 71 million. We um, kept the millage rate in 2009 at 10.969, and the number for collections went to 71,124. Keeping in mind, our population was continuing to grow throughout all of all of the years, 2007 through present. So then you look at 2010, where we increased the millage rate by about 0.781, which resulted in 11.750. 
Our collections were $64 million, and we received a gain of about six, or we lost six million six seventeen. So while the millage was increased, the collections actually were decreased. That's important to note. Um, then as you go on through 2011, 2012, you'll see that in 2011, the millage rate was at 11.75. Again, our collections went down to 60 million 254, which was about a $4 million reduction. And then in 2012, the millage rate was at its hi highest point at 14.5, which was an increase of about 2.75. Our collections went up by about $5 million. Again, every year, the budget for the county also increased. If you look at 2013, 2014, the millage did slightly go down from 14.5 to 14.497 and then to 14.298. Um, again, but your collections went down in the year 2013 and then back up in 2014. So what we are seeing is that while our collections are increasing, we're, we're getting back to where we were or at least exceeding where we were in 2008. Now, if you look at the 2017 12.733 and the 2017 13.3, 733. The collections will be 81274 under the current 2016 millage rate or 87836 which would result in about $11 million increase. Now I think what's important about that number is if you go back to the capital projects that Mr. Johnson presented, the number that was presented to the board was about $10 million. So I think that's important for for everyone to understand that we're really, really looking at what our needs are. We're not just standing before the board asking to increase the millage rate so that we can get an extra $11 million. We presented a list of 10 million that started at 32 million. So it's very important to see that. And I think, again, looking at where the millage rate has been over the last 10 years um, pretty much shows that. Now, there were also some questions raised regarding the budget, and I know we've adopted the budget, but I do want to, for the record, to make sure everyone understands that it is a state law that we have to have a balanced budget. And so in order for us to balance the budget, we do have to take funds out of fund balance. But there are also provisions in our county regulations that we cannot drop below 25%. So those are our emergency rainy day funds, which would be that 25%. And I assure the board and the constituents and citizens that we have not dropped below that 25% and that when the board did move to adopt the budget, it was a balanced budget. Again, it was just balanced based on the use of fund balance, so the amount of about $6.6 .6 million. And I'll be more than happy to put that slide back up just so that you all can look at it. Another question raised um, was, are businesses taxed in the county, the warehouses and the commercial businesses? And the answer to that is absolutely. They are actually taxed at a higher value. So there are no businesses, warehouses, or anyone that owns property in the county that is not taxed. Um, I will make sure tonight that we do provide some information in a comparison um, that would probably be beneficial for maybe those properties that are zoned commercial or industrial um, just for the board. There were a lot of questions about the budget as it pertains to the school system, and unfortunately, we don't set the board for set the budget for the board of education. They are their own private um, board. Our board of commissioners only sets the millage rate, and the importance of the discussion this morning in terms of the board of education was just to show that while the millage rate for the county is 12.733, the entire rate is 36. Point nine, and of that, the Board of Education does collect millage in terms of how they set their capital priorities. Um, the Board of Commissioners, nor does this staff any, have any control over um, what the Board of Education does. There was also questions about the 13.51 increase, and I'm going to put that slide back up and try to walk through that again as well. Okay, again, and this is based on the recommended 3.733 that staff has recommended to the board. If you have a home that's valued at 150,000 or 225, whichever one you want to look at, you have a assessed value of $60,000 for a $150,000 home and $90,000 for a $225,000 home, and that's based on a 40% assessed value. Now, if you are a resident of the county and you claim homestead exemption, 
Of that 60, it takes your value or your tax now at 45,000 because you have a $15,000 exemption. The change in the millage rate from 12.098 would result in a 13.51% increase. And the reason the 12.098 is important is because if the county were electing or if the staff had recommended 100% rollback, that rollback number would have been 12.098. When you're calculating the percentage for an increase, you cannot use the current year, you have to use the 100% rollback number. So the difference between the 12.098 and the 13.733, which is what staff is recommending, is a difference of about 1.635, which would be a 13.51 increase. And then I think I've captured the final question regarding the Locust Grove increase. Again, I won't go over the top part because I think I've gone over it enough for everyone to understand what the values are. The, Lo the city of Locust Grove and McDonough received certain rollbacks from the county for police services, for planning and zoning, and for the building department. If you'll notice, in 2016, the city of Locust Grove received a rollback of 1.886. This year, they only received a rollback of 1.68. So that's less the amount that they received last year. They received no rollback for planning and zoning services in the building department. So if you don't receive a rollback, your rollback reduction is going to be less. Now what's important is that the city of Locust Grove, 100% rollback millage rate for Locust Grove would have been 9.863. The city of Locust Grove increased their millage by one mil this year, and so that, was a, that increased it to 10.827. That increase resulted in 9.66% of of the overall 22.07. And I'm gonna say that again because I know that's a lot of information. City of Locust Grove, 100% rollback is 9.873. The city increased their millage rate for 2016 to 10.827. That resulted in a 9.66 increase. Because the county is electing to do the one mil increase, that would, be, that would equate to 1.225, and of the 22.07, the county's portion would only be 12.41. So if you take the 9.66 and the 12.41, the total increase would be 22.07. And again, it's totally de dealing with the rollback reductions that they did not receive from the planning and zoning and building services, and then the reduction to the police services. I believe I've answered all questions that have been posed, but if not, I'll be my more than happy to answer any other questions that the board may have. Okay, the floor is now open for any comments or questions from the board. Okay, Commissioner Clemens, and we go to Commissioner Prince. I just want to say to the citizens that came out from District 2, my district today, I want to thank you and I want to continue to encourage you. <coughs> we have meetings every first and third um, Tuesday of the month. It's important that you're here, that you see how I vote, that you see how all the rest of these commissioners up here are voting. Your taxpayers' dollars are on the line. You need to know what's going on. You need to know who you're voting for. Um, and I want you to make sure that you know who your representative is. A lot of you guys in here, you don't even know who your district commissioner is. Find out who your commissioner is and know who you're voting for and watch how they vote. And I encourage all of you to go back and look at the meeting this past Tuesday and make sure that you're up to date on what's going on in this county. All right, Commissioner Prince. Thank you. Thank you, Jen, Chair. I just wanted to reiterate something with the school board because we seem to get kind of uh, goofy when we start talking about the school board. Um, the board of commissioners, we're over roads, uh, police, fire. I have no input whatsoever into how the school board runs. You actually have an elected official. If you live in my district, uh, it's Donna McBride. Um, she's an elected official who works for the school board. They set their millage completely independent from us. They spend their money completely independent from us. We have no input on how they structure their capital, how they do any of their facilities, any input really into what they do. So, um, and I did want to bring up, last year we did 100% rollback, which is basically we did not raise taxes at all. And I believe the school board, did they go up last year? Or was it year before? The, the school board has maintained the 20 um, mils 20. and that is the max that they can collect. Okay, all right. Yes, the school board is taking the majority of our taxes at, on, you know, for the millage 
but again, we as a board of commissioners have no input whatsoever into the school board. Uh, the thing to do, the school board has school board meetings. Um, you can go to the school board meetings and uh, contact your school board elected official and speak with them about the, the schools um, that are going on. I did also want to talk about the business versus uh, resident taxes. Um, a citizen that lives in a home, a homeowner, when they pay their taxes, they, use, they pay for about 70% of the services they use, meaning uh, that somewhere else that has to be captured. Meaning if, if, if you pay your taxes, you, you use more resources than what you pay for. Businesses, on the other hand, it's the other way around. A business pays much, much more than what they use. So businesses actually increase our tax, uh, tax base, help all the citizens and actually bring property tax down. Every home that's built in Henry County will actually increase your taxes. Um, it, it's not, I know that doesn't sound, doesn't sound right, but that's the way it works out. So I just want everybody to know that. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Holmes. Sherry, last year we had, I think, um, a surplus of 21 million in our fund balance. Where are we this year? Well, as you know, we have not closed out our books for the year. We're into July now, but conservatively, um, looking at the numbers that we have right now, we'll be anywhere between eight to $12 million. Again, that's surplus. just a conservative number, yes, sir. And I think a good, and, and obviously that's a good question, and that was one thing that Brad mentioned during the BOC meeting on Tuesday when we were talking about capital, that there are funds available in our fund balance for some of those capital expenditures. I caution against us depleting our fund balance because I think it's important to note that we had 32 amendments to our budget last year, and of the 32 amendments, over half of them were for emergencies. And so when we start talking about the excess that we have, we want to make sure that, yes, we do have that excess so that when we have an emergency, we can come to the board and say we have the funds to do what we need to do. Um, but right now, conservatively, about $12 million. Once we close the books out, we'll probably be able to give a better answer to that question, sir. Um, can, you give me a, can you give me a percentage on the, um, the average increase in uh, property value this year or assessment? Because we haven't heard anything on that. Commissioner, I may have to report that back to you this evening at 6.30, but you want to know the average increase in percentage for a property. For, uh, yeah, across the board. Comments, Commissioner Barham. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Sherry and Brad for this great presentation. I've been on the board for five years, and we've been through five of these, and uh, it's uh, one of the better ones and more informational. Um, and I also want to thank not just my District 3 citizens of here, but I want to thank all the residents of Henry County for being here this, this morning. And uh, it lets us know that you're concerned, and, and uh, we appreciate that. We appreciate you being here. Um, it was probably good that the news did put some bad information out and, and maybe brought some of you out, and that's good. But uh, I'd like to reiterate something. The school board uh, does collect 61.6% .6 of all your taxes, and, and that's a big number. And uh, you, uh, you've heard there that they, uh, Mr. Prince, stated at 20 mils plus they have the east floss so that gives them a little more money but i'd urge all you citizens to go to the school board and get involved in that as well but uh appreciate you being here this morning thank you thank you all right other comments any other questions okay well um again i do um, commend the presentation quite informative and i hope that um again we'll have more information as we proceed into tonight's meeting. Thank you, citizens, for coming out. Um, thank you for your questions. Um, it is being considered as we continue through this process. And as we conclude today's uh, meeting, um, please be reminded that we will have another public hearing um, to receive public comments tonight at 6.30 p.m. And we invite you to come back, invite you to spread the word. Again, this is also being recorded. So as has already been mentioned, you can go back and review this. And um, hopefully the presentation will be placed online very soon. So if there are no other questions or comments for the good of the group, I now accept a motion to adjourn. We've got a motion second. and a second. Consider us adjourned. Thank you. See you all this evening at 6.30.